This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these vectorized text circle uh, sort of patterns using Inkscape. So I'll go ahead and open up Inkscape here. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you could update Inkscape's appearance with this dark theme and these new icons, I'll put a link to that information in the description of the video. Otherwise, we'll be good to get started. I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to make sure we have the display unit set to pixels. I'm going to turn off the page border close out of that then we'll go to view we're going to want custom selected and then we'll zoom in at one to one and then i'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button up here and we're going to want last selected chosen from this drop down and then i'll open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu with that button up there and up here where it says uh when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion make sure you have that turned off like you see here on my screen we don't want this turned on we want that off and uh, I think that should be good for now. We're pretty good to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a circle. So I'll grab the circles and ellipses tool, which is right here. And I'm just going to hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a, a, a perfectly round circle like that in the middle of the canvas. And I'm going to make this a light gray, something like that. Something that's just slightly, slightly darker than the white canvas behind it. And once we've done that, I'm going to grab this select tool and I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this gray fill color by clicking this X down here. And I'm going to give it a black outline by holding shift and clicking on the color black. And once we've done that, I'll come over to the stroke style tab and I want to change this to pixels. I'm going to change the width of this to 50. And I'm going to bring the opacity of that down in half. And what I'll do next is right here where it says cap, just make sure we have butt cap selected. And then I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale this down so it's smaller than that gray circle right there. And once we've done that, I'll duplicate that again by hitting control D. And I'm going to make this one smaller. I'm going to make this 30 pixels. I'll hold control and shift, scale that down. I'm actually going to click and drag over all of this and make this a little bigger. Again, just make sure to hold control and shift to lock the proportions. I'll put this one up against there like that. And I'm going to duplicate this one again. Right click, go to duplicate. I'm going to make this one 20. Hold control and shift and scale that down a little smaller. And then I'll duplicate that again. This one I will make 10. Hold control and shift and scale it down. And I'll duplicate it one more time. And I'll make this one 5 pixels. And again, just scale it down like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this gray circle and I'm going to make this a lot bigger. I'm just going to hold control and shift. I'm going to make it much bigger, much bigger than the circles on the inside here. In fact, I'm going to zoom out so I can get a better view. I'm going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. And I want to take this inside one right here, this 30 pixel one. I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale that out to about here. And then I'll take this, uh, I guess this is the 20 pixel one. I'll scale this one up inside of it like that. And then I'll take this one right here, which is the 10 pixel. Put that right up, right inside of it like that. Then I'll take this 50 pixel one like this. You don't have to follow it exactly how I'm doing. I'm just putting these together. Uh, basically, I'm putting them in a, in a way so that they're not separated by size, going from small to large or large to small. We just want them like randomized, like you see what I'm doing here. So I'll put that right about there. We want equal, about equal spacing going between each uh, circle there so and then this small one I'll make this one about that big on the inside I'll keep that on the inside so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change the um, I guess you can call it the circumference of these circles uh, what I'll do is I'll click on this large circle on the outside here and I'm gonna click on the circles tool and once we do that we're gonna notice three different nodes here we have one on the left one on the top and those are both squares and we have this circle node right here. And if you click and drag this circle node, you'll notice that it starts to change the circle. Now, if you bring your cursor to the outside of the circle, it's gonna keep it's gonna keep it looking kind of like a pie chart like that. But if you bring your cursor inside of the circle, it's gonna change it into a line like that. So what I like what, what we want for this tutorial is we want lines like this. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm keeping the cursor on the inside of the circle. And I'm just gonna bring this out to about here like that. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing. I click on this circle right here, the next one in. Grab that there. Again, bring the cursor on the inside of the circle. I'll put this about right there. And then I'll take this one and put this right about there because we don't want these ends being all the same. We want them in different positions. And I'll take this one. I'll do the same thing. Grab this node, bring this one out to about here. And take this one and put it right about, let's say maybe over here. And we'll take this large 50 pixel line right here. I'll make this one a little smaller. Do something like that. And then for this smaller line, we'll make this one go pretty far, maybe out to about there. And keep that right there. Maybe I'll go back to this one and bring that in a little bit. And basically you want to end up with something like this. We're just adjusting them. You don't have to do this exactly as you see it on my screen. You can go about this your own way. Just as long as it looks random and sporadic like that, it's pretty good. And once we've done that, I'm going to grab the select tool. I'm just going to zoom out a little more. Again, to zoom out, I'm just holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. And I'm going to click and drag over all of this. And I'm going to group it together with this button that says group selected objects. And I'll duplicate it. And I'm going to flip it vertically and horizontally. And then I'll ungroup it. Click off of the, the graphic to deselect everything. And I'll take this gray circle and just get rid of it. And you can see what's going on here. We're starting to get our circles uh, that, are, that, are, that are forming. So what I want to do now is I want to make these circles to be touching each other a little closer. Let me ungroup that. I want to make sure we ungroup everything. We can click and drag over everything and just make sure it's all ungrouped. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click and drag over all of it. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift to zoom to uh, scale it down a little bit. And if you notice, as I scale it down, those circles are going to start to overlap with each other. Now let me undo that. I'll go to Edit, Undo. I want to do this individually with each circle instead of doing it all at once like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale up these, these smaller rings right here so that they're overlapping this large ring. And to do that, I'm not going to scale up the ring itself because it's going to take it off of its center point and it's not going to match like that. I'm going to select that, select that ring, then hold shift and click on the circle as well and then scale it, oops, and then scale it up so that it stays within its axis like that. So I'm going to scale that up to there. Actually, you know what? Let me hold shift and click the other one as well. And I'll scale these both up about that far so that they're going into that blue I mean, not, not, not the blue, the black uh, ring right there. And then I'll click, I'll, I'll just click this next ring up here, this one right here, the 10 pixel one. I'll hold shift, click on the other one on the opposite side, hold shift, click and click on the, uh, the circle, and then just scale this down so it's running over the top of that larger ring, sort of like that. And again, I'm just going to click off it to deselect everything. I'm going to bring these two rings in a little bit, so I'm just going to select them, scale them down like that. And then I'll take these two rings and I'll scale them down like that. And what I'll do now is I'll just start to give this some color. So I'm going to click and drag over just these circles right here. And I'm going to give this a blue color. I'm going to hold shift and click on the color blue down here to fill that in with the blue color. And it's important that you hold shift when you click on that because this is not a path, this is a stroke. If you just click on the blue color, it's going to fill it in like that, which that is not what we want. So just make sure you hold shift when you go to click on that. And then I'll click off that to deselect everything. Um, what I'll do next is I'm going to take this gray circle right here. I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to make that the same color of blue or something similar. And I'll just hold control and shift and scale that down so we have one in the center point there like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some more. Let me click on that and bring the opacity down a little bit so it matches those other ones. I'm going to create some more of these circles going around the outside here, even larger. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag over all of these objects except for the gray circle. If you notice here, my selection box isn't going over the gray circle. I'm going to keep it right about there. I'm going to group that together. And then I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control D. And then I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this up about that much. And then I'll ungroup that. Click off it to deselect everything. I'm going to take this large circle and get rid of that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this gray circle here in the background. I'm going to scale that up. 
and then I'll hold shift and click on these larger rings groups that we just duplicated. You know what? We'll have to click and drag over all of it and then hold shift and click on this object here in the center to deselect that. And now we can click on it a second time and to grab the rotation handle and we can rotate it around like that just to give it a little bit of more of a sort of like a random look like that. And you know what? Let me hold shift and click on that gray circle to deselect it. I want to, I actually want to differentiate these rings for now. So I'm just going to make them a different color. I'm going to hold shift and click on the color red to make those red. And you know what? As a matter of fact, I'm going to get rid of the fill color by clicking the X. And I'm going to give them, you know what? I have to convert them to a path first. Let's go to path, stroke to path. And that's going to convert those to path objects. And now we can turn off the red color and then hold shift and click on the color red to give it a red outline. And it's going to create this, this mess right here. We're going to fix that right now. Over here in the Stroke Style tab, I'm going to change the percentage to pixels instead. And I'm going to make this maybe something like 3, maybe 4, whatever works. That's pretty good. I'll click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to take this stripe right here, like this small one. I'm just going to make that red and then hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the outline color just to make that a solid fill color like that. I'll do the same thing with this one over here. I'll make that red, get rid of the outline. And I'm going to come over here to this side and do the same thing. Make that red, get rid of the outline. Make that red and get rid of the outline. And what I want to do next is I want to click and drag over everything and then go to path, stroke to path. And once we've done that, you can click off it to deselect everything. I'm going to click on these objects right here. I'm just going to ungroup them with the ungroup button. And let me click off of that to deselect everything. And let me see. Yeah, these are still stroke objects. You can tell down here in, the, in this tab where it says the stroke color is blue, but the fill color is none. That's how you know that there is no fill color. So these are still paths. I'm going to click and drag. Now that it's ungrouped, let's click and drag over everything again. And we'll just, again, just make sure everything's ungrouped. You can click on that a few times. We'll go to Path. Stroke the path and click off it to deselect everything. And once we've done that, I'm just going to take this gray circle and move it out of the way. You could, in fact, you could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And now you can click and drag over all of this and make this all the same color. Maybe a shade of blue like that. I'll go with something like that. That's pretty good. And for the opacity, I would still keep the opacity pretty low so we can see where these overlap. And we're going we're gonna to accentuate that a little bit by changing the colors. I'm going to take some of these and change them to a different shade. I'm going to use uh, maybe like a pink or something like that. And I'll go to the Fill tab, and I'm just going to copy this code right here. I'll hit Control-C just so I can apply that to the other random rings as well. So I'm just going to go through and just color that in with the alternating rings. I'm just going to make that that pink shade right there. And I'm just hitting Control V to paste that in there. And let me come over here and do the same thing. For this one, I'll make this large one, that pink shade. And I'll do the same thing over here. And then out here. And I'll color this one in like that. And if you zoom out a little bit, you can see we're pretty much done. We've created our text circles using Inkscape. So if you want, you can select everything and bring the opacity up. But like I said previously, I like how it looks with the opacity down a little bit so you can see the intersecting area between them, between those shapes right there. But whatever, you know, whatever suits your preference. So that's how you can go about creating that with Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.